Because I just want to blast the shit out of the quads and we're going to blast it super hard. Let's kill Let's it. Let's get it. <laughs> Good. All you. Come on. <laughs> Come on, give me more than that. Come on, give me more than that. Come on, come on. Good God. Come on. Six. There you go. Get the hands. Come on, come on, come on. All right, go. What? Eight. Oh, God. Come on, give me more. There, come on. More. Push back and get it. Push up. Push up. Guys. Oh, hey. I feel like a drunk drunk walker. What is going on guys, Coach Joe here at Elite FTS. And honestly, this experience is pretty surreal to me. I grew up watching this guy. Uh, in my mind, I always just think of myself as a nobody. So for me to be here with Dave, uh, I don't really get starstruck or that crazy excited over things, but I was stoked uh, to be here today. And on top of that, he kicked the crap out of me. Uh, so I just want to uh, introduce him and I want him to kind of break down what we had done while you guys watched the B-roll and just kind of get your take on your philosophy of like, how do we come up with this leg training session? I do not recommend this. I'm sure he'll say the same thing to you guys watching this. If you're a beginner, novice, this is definitely an advanced uh, lifting session. It took us about three and a half hours. There was a lot of water breaks. I was holding back throw up for about an hour and a half. Uh, so without further ado, Dave, tell him basically what the heck just sure. happened. Sure, we'll just break it down. But real quick, before we get into that, I don't like what you said about the nobody thing. Nobody's a nobody. <laughs> so I just want to put that on camera for everybody. Right. Nobody should ever think that. Okay, <laughs> so I got my glasses. So when I was presented with this, it was, <laughs> you want to come out with Eugene, you want to do one of the, you want to recreate one of the Meadows workouts yeah, yeah. that John yeah. and I did. But the misunderstanding there is people will see clips, but they don't see the whole thing. So when they were discussing it, when we were discussing it as a content team, I'm like, well, do they understand this is like three and a half hours of training? There's a lot that goes on. So what we'll do is we'll go through each exercise and you can kind of tell me what you thought. Yeah. Because when I went through this last night, it was trying to figure out, you know, where you guys are conditioning wise, which most people should understand is way higher than most. Right. And that's not a bragging type thing. I'm just being honest that anybody that was to try this is yeah, not yeah. a good idea so it will be scaled down and I scaled down what we had in here and I'll talk about where I scaled <laughs> some things down okay so we started with just having you do your normal warm-up I mean, how in depth do you want me to go here oh you, as much as you want man we can okay, talk okay. about whatever I guess you can always trim everything yep. out my first thing says calves question mark right <laughs> sometimes you start with calves <laughs> no, but I'm like oh, I just figure that out later and then I got notes of what things should be explosive, what things should be slow. Mm -hmm. So with a hypertrophy type training session, and this is not a strength session, I like to mix in slower tempos, faster tempos. Some might say dynamic work, but I don't really want to say what's dynamic, dynamic work. It's mm -hmm. a different type definition, but that's, what, that's one intensity variable you can play with. You got slower tempos, faster tempos, more explosive force, how you mentally are going to interpret that force and different types of contractions and then how to lay those out into the training program. So I knew I wanted to start because you guys said Meadows and John always likes to start with leg curls. So I wanted to put in there, John likes those because he wants people to start with a hamstring pump, thinks it's better to go into squatting and so forth with a hamstring pump. I don't know if I completely agree with that, but what I do like from the bodybuilding standpoint is to take people into squats when they're a little bit more fatigued. Mm -hmm. Because then mentally they're gonna go from, I normally squat 500 for 10 to, oh, 275 for 10, that's not bad. Because you don't know what's good, mm -hmm. you don't know what's bad. And by the time we get to the squats, I want the focus to be more on the muscles and not the movement. That's the biggest difference between the strength and the hypertrophy, right? Is one you're training movements, the other you're training muscles. Mm -hmm. So we went with uh, seated leg curls first. I use that a little bit as a diagnostic. So if the lower, especially with the one I have is an old hammer strength one. And if you, if you get too locked in, it's a good, it is a good thing if you're too locked in because then you can't cheat. Mm -hmm. But it's a bad thing for me because I can't see how you're going to cheat. Uh -huh. So how you're going to cheat is gonna show different compensation patterns and things that will play out throughout the training session as it did with you. Mm. So we start to see the hips doing more of the work, the back doing more of the work. And we'll make the adjustments, but I'm making a mental note. Here's something to look forward, moving forward, because now is this gonna be, now where are the hack squats gonna fall compared to where the leg press are gonna fall, where the squats gonna fall? Because if there's a lower back vulnerability, not saying you have lower back problems, but there's the potential for a lower back vulnerability. How's that going to be scheduled throughout? So that's a good tool there. Then we can fatigue the hamstrings enough to get a gauge of 
work capacity, but also to kind of get a gauge of what your work capacity and what Juji's work capacity is. So if I say I want you to train at a 10, what does that mean? Mm. Right, so I can go through these different things, do normal work sets, and then do something that is a harder work set, and then try to mm -hmm. gauge, you know, where that is. Because I'm not a big fan of RPE scales, but I understand the need of an RPE scale. The reason I'm not a big fan of it is because your RPE scale is going to be different than mine's going to be different than Juji's will be different than Sam's. I need to know yours if I'm training you. Mm -hmm. you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And we have to have kind of an equal understanding with that because when we move forward I want you to be pushing harder but see what you think what I think is a 10 you might think is or let me rephrase that what you think is a, a eight I may think is a four mm. so I got to find this common ground yeah right because what happens is a battle of egos a lot of times especially the better the lifter and then that's when injuries happen so you get a coach that's just trying to drill a lifter into the ground beat him into the ground and the ego the other so you see what's going yeah. on so this yeah. isn't about ego this is about the best training session you can possibly get mm -hmm. so i guess i can go deep in all this and stuff i, I suppose <laughs> anyhow, anyhow. <laughs> so we did the, the seated leg curls there were six work sets and then we finished with minis i like the minis not so much because the minis are going to be better at hypertrophy or any of that crap it just burns like crazy yeah. and i do believe with the hypertrophy stuff there's a mind muscle connection and i want to know where it's going so I can ask, how do you feel that in your hamstrings? How's your hamstrings feel? And you're, you are here, you know, you're yeah. at a point where it is. Now, if you're like, my lower back's pumped, so okay, no, wait, it's not yeah. your hamstrings. So it's, all this stuff is a feedback loop mm -hmm. that's kind of playing throughout the whole thing. After that, we went on to the leg presses. So I did move that in front of the hack squats because of what we saw on the, um, the leg curl. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, let's put this here because I'm not really sure about this back thing. Yeah. Right? Yep. So then that's where I had Sam watch this when we start to go heavy. So I got another second set of eyes to be mm -hmm. able to determine because we now we got to start doing the work. Yep. Right? And so on the leg presses, we went against bands. A couple reasons for that is you both are strong. Right? So if, if I don't go against bands, we're just using straight weight. Mm -hmm. How many warm up sets is it going to take to get to 13 plates? Yeah. You, there, yeah. There's a freaking, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now if I got reverse bands on there, which I usually use on my machine just to take, you know, for you, I would need to do that if it was super, super heavy because of the back thing. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking 14, 15, 16 plates. That's mm -hmm. a lot of sets yeah. just to get there. <laughs> so you go against bands that fast. changes, right? Yeah. And it's going to wear you out faster mm -hmm. because it's eccentric overload. Mm -hmm. The bands are pulling against you. Yeah right which in theory is going to try to push you down faster mm -hmm. right so that eccentric overload into the muscle is going to be more fatiguing mm -hmm. so that's where that was there then it was just okay now i need to find a range that's going to be hard for six to eight reps to them right because to me you can do 18 with what you can do six to eight with. you don't know it most people don't know it but given the right circumstances, yeah. right hydration, right environment, they can do that. Mm -hmm. So let's get there. Let's do a couple sets around that range. And then that's when we hit the rest pause. I believe it was rest pause, right? Yes. So it was, yep. you know, the six, six, I think we went five, was it five or six? Uh, I think we did six reps. It was six reps. So I stuck the plan there. So six reps, hold. And that's not an isometric contraction hold. It's just hold, breathe, breathe, oxygen, oxygen. High rep. Um, leg press sets are good they can burn the crap of the legs but most people fail on that because they can't breathe mm -hmm. right then the chin dropping and stuff like that cuts the air off even more so this allows that air circulation so when you're holding four deep breaths four deep breaths then there's th uh, three so six rest six rest six then go from there so there were three rest pause sets which is what I had scheduled there against uh, uh, a, a light band and a mini band my note here was pull light bands into two sets of 20 with just the, the macro mini. Yeah. After those, you guys were shot. <laughs> I don't want to say you were shot, but it, it, it was hitting you, right? So yeah, yeah. now it's like, okay, there's still a long way to go with this. So with what we have yet to do, how can we, if I, if I were to do these other sets of 20, is this going to aid or hinder what we have to do for the rest of the day? And so that call there was just probably going to hinder it. And now that it's over, it would have. Mm -hmm. It definitely would have, um, especially with the heat and everything else. Yeah. Different circumstances probably would have done them. Um, 
So that took out. So that ended up being, uh, instead of five work sets, it was three work sets, mm -hmm. right? So that, that was also part of the dialogue with you guys as well, as you understand at this point, we've done four work sets. And you both are kind of like, huh? I'm like, yeah. no, let's count the sets that were actually work sets. Yeah. There's been four. So now a lot of things are going through your mind, like, oh shit, what did I get myself into? <laughs> you know, the other part is this is kind of freaking cool. Yeah. And you're starting to question, do I even work Little hard, hard. <laughs> with the other stuff that I do? And that's what I want, right? Because there's a bigger takeaway mm -hmm. that we still haven't really got to yet yeah, yeah. from the whole thing. And um, so there's where that is. After that, we went on to do something that was a little bit, um, actually, no, I shifted after that. We went on to the squats, right? Yeah, we did the, uh, the yes. So I, Yeah, so I moved the uh, hack squats away. The hack squats are going to be first. I see I keep moving them, right? Because I'm still not sure about the back. So now I'm not sure about the work capacity, right? Because this was brutal. I just had to pull two of the work sets out. Mm -hmm. The hack squats were super brutal. Yeah. Right, and I knew that you didn't. So it's like, I need some kind of break. Yeah, yeah. And Trick think of how messed up this is, right? <laughs> Distraction. Yeah, us. so your break, your distraction was a strip set of, of uh, yoke bar squats, yeah. right? <clears throat> so then we went to the SS yoke bar for a chain strip set. Mm -hmm. So on that, I found a weight that's a reasonable weight for you guys to be able to do for six. To me, I wanted it to be something that you could probably do for 20 reps. Mm -hmm. And it's something like, I don't know, 250, 275, somewhere yeah. in that range with the chains. And then with the strip set on there, and that was only one strip set. So we work up, and then what we did with that strip set is we pulled chains for each strip mm -hmm. set with you racking, so not holding the weight either. So every time you rack, that allows you the chance to breathe. It allows me the chance to see where your chin is in regards to being able to breathe, oxygen, and all that stuff. <laughs> By pulling the chains off, we're not changing the weight at the bottom, mm -hmm. which now that you've done it, that's a completely different strip set than if you did 315, 225, yeah. 135. Because a lot of times that 135, the only problem when you do that normally, it's not hard. You just can't breathe. Mm -hmm. I want the muscle to be like, yeah. holy crap, that's what you're trying to train. Mm -hmm. So if we can stop the momentum from the bottom, because that's what happens with the 135 on a normal strip set, mentally you're like, go, and you just go and you just mm -hmm. ride it up through. Well, this, the bottom weight stays the same the whole time. So we went through there. It kind of gives a little bit of a break. It gets you back up on your feet from the seated positions, lying positions, back up your feet, airflow, breathing. It helps, right? Because now the circulation is better. Instead of just all being down, you're up, you're moving. You don't think it's better, but it is. Because now the whole body is circulating nutrients. And the rep tempo went back to being more normal type of stuff. Like, okay, you're naturally gonna fall into that. After that, we went into um, the hack squats. So it's in out of order there. And the hack squats were probably Structurally, yeah. they were the, the most brutal thing that was in here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And after that, I was more comfortable for you yeah. on the pelvis because it maintained its integrity through yeah. all of that. Yeah. So it's like, okay, this is not going to be a problem on the hack squat because at least we can cue it mm -hmm. or I can break it. Yeah. to where my concern on the hack squat was you would start to fatigue that pelvic tilt that we were seeing on the leg curl would resurface again on the hack squat and with that i'm really concerned about watching the breathing because you got a pad pushing down here which is cutting circulation off to the brain not saying you're going to die but if you cut that circulation off and you pass out you know there especially at these intensity levels so these are things i'm trying to mitigate against so on that one, it was several work sets of working up on sets of six and doing ISO holds. Mm -hmm. So the first one was just three ISO holds at the end of you just holding. Right? The second one was you holding but us pulling down at the same time. The third was you holding us pulling down but then trying to push back. So what we did on those three sets is we scaled the intensity of the ISO hold without you really knowing what we were doing because mm -hmm. the rest of it kind of stayed the same. Yeah. That's an easier thing to scale the intensity of because you're not changing airflow because you're not adding repetitions. You're not doing strip sets. You're not doing all mm -hmm. these other things. You're just adding um, stronger Volsalva is basically yeah. all you're really yeah. adding with that. Um, after that, we went to the leg extensions, right? Oh. Yes, yes. So the leg extensions, oh. that's just... To be honest, there's really no reason for that, right? That's just burning. Uh, at that point, you're just testing us. It is testing. <laughs> it, I mean, it is, it is a rest, right? Yeah. It is a rest. It's, it's slowing the circulation down. It's lowering the blood pressure a little bit. It burns like crazy. 
So I, we could have, it didn't have to be in there. Yeah, yeah. It was just, and it, you know, it just burns like crazy and I just skip over that <laughs> because it's, I mean, and that's why there's only two sets, mm -hmm. right? Because I yeah. can't sit here and say 10 sets is gonna make any, yeah. anybody that knows training understands that that's uh -huh. just, it burns, it helps a little bit, but nobody's like, hey, I like steps there, <laughs> you know, the number one machine. Then we went on to the reverse lunges with the chains, which was a drop set, mm -hmm. you know, so, and we stayed with the same leg. Right, because like going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What I don't like with that when it's that deep into the training session is things are starting to fatigue, you know, so as all these other things are starting to feed that, that can bring internal stability. So I, I want to mitigate all the factors that I can just drill a muscle. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not training uh, an athlete or a football player where these things are components I'm trying to train. Yeah. These are things I'm just trying to blast that muscle. Mm -hmm. So if we were to go back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, that isn't gonna, I can fatigue you faster staying on the same leg. Mm -hmm. So that's just six sets, do an ISO hold. The only reason the ISO hold was in there is what I'm trying to get you guys to do is to target the quads and the blood flow into the quads and keep the focus in the quad and not the focus in the rep. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was telling you, I don't care how many reps it is, just get the yep. muscle to do what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Fatigue and fail that muscle. If it's four reps, who cares? Three reps, who cares? Six reps, who cares? and then going that route. And I believe that was, we didn't superset that, did we? No. no. I had it in here to superset, but I pulled that. <laughs> so I was gonna superset that with the sissy squats, mm -hmm. but I pulled that because those were actually more brutal than what I predicted that they were gonna be. I knew they were gonna be hard. Um, then we went on to come on, come on, sissy squats and just doing them a different way. Yeah. You know, it's that mainly more for Juji because that's a, a weak point that he has to work on for stage is just, and it, it's not really, that was compounded for two, in there for a couple of different reasons, is it's not that hard to do, right? It's gonna burn, and mm -hmm. it, but it's a body weight move, it's gonna be that hard. But he has to learn how to intern, or externally rotate that knee when he's posing and become more part, and if we can ingrain that into his training anywhere, anyhow, it should be put in there yeah. because the last thing he wants to do when that's a weak point of his leg is to forget to do that when it counts yeah. and then to know how to lock it in. So the sissy squat, at least ours you can go a little bit wider. It automatically, if you, if you lean back in like you guys did, it automatically locks that. Mm. So you know immediately. Mm -hmm. So then it's just how to scale the intensity of it. And I didn't know. You know, I, my notes here was 21's question mark. <laughs> I didn't know how to scale the intensity because I don't know how fatigued you're going to be. I do know that just doing straight, full uh -huh. range of motion reps on that, you're not going to get many. So it's going to be hard to get the yeah. blood in there that I want to be able to get in there. And so that was, then we just stretched the hamstrings out with dumbbell stiff legs, mm -hmm. right? And um, that was really it, right? No, the leg uh, curls, the leg, leg curls, curls, leg yeah. curls. Yeah. yeah, the reason why I went to leg curls is when I asked you guys how pumped the hamstrings were after the uh, reverse lunges. I think you said 50, yeah, 50%. It was it's good. about right. It felt pretty good. If it was 70%, I wouldn't have done the leg curl. Actually, no, because it was 50%, we did a real quick set of standing one leg leg curls mm -hmm. just to get the blood in there. And this is where your guys' experience comes in because now you understand kind of where I'm coming from, we're on the same page. And I can say, look, I just need it to be 70%. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you gotta do. That's super simple, one leg, leg curl. Very easy, it's not requiring a lot of oxygen. There's no pressure on the body. Mm -hmm. Let's just get that pump up there a little bit more and then go into something that's harder, higher intensity, mm -hmm. which was the mechanical, kind of a mechanical drop set on the leg curl. Mm -hmm. And with that one, with our machine, you can start in that decline position yeah, yeah. and then come more into the incline position. The decline position for you creates a little bit of an issue because that back thing starts to yeah, resurface yeah. again. But once you get up into that little bit of an incline position, it makes it easier to do the pulses and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And Bring then we up, round up, it out up, with up, just up, um, up, the up, stiff up, leg, up, mm -hmm. RDL, what, just stretching the hamstrings out. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. It could have Okay. Hold, it could have been hold. just as well served hold, by hold, laying on the floor hold, and stretching your hamstring. I just wanted to open it up to allow a bit yeah. more blood flow in there <laughs> and right. wrap it up. It, I mean, you guys did it, great. It, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, that by far was the hardest leg workout I've ever done, I think, in my entire life. So thank you for putting me through <laughs> that. Um, but like he had said, guys, in this, we're more on the advanced spectrum of athletes. So if you wanted to even attempt this, I would say scale it back 
But uh, just try one of them. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, try yeah, one yeah, of them yeah. or, or include it. Um, we're going to go over uh, kind of what he was talking about my hips and my pelvis in another video at some point because I really uh, found a lot of value in the things that they were saying and Sam were saying. My mind was kind of opening up to uh, that could be influencing some of my compound lifts as well. So we'll address that. Uh, but what I really found interesting about this training session was one, all the thought you put into it. So you guys obviously just heard everything he's thinking about as he's programming this workout. And a lot of times we only take like one or two variables for a workout. Maybe it's intensity, maybe it's gonna be tempo. But throughout this workout, we had like every single variable that you could possibly imagine uh, to let us train hard and, and keep pushing that volume by manipulating those variables. So I thought that was cool. And obviously Dave's been around for a long time and, and his knowledge and wisdom that he was kind of saying, and even you know, like your eyes, dude, like you're seeing little things that I have never, you know, had pointed out before to myself and to Judy. So really, really cool experience guys. Uh, so once again, just super grateful for you taking me through mm -hmm. that. Uh, and I know you guys are probably learning a lot. We have an awesome collaboration going, so make sure you're obviously subscribed to Dave, subscribe to Juji, hopefully you're subscribed to my channel. Uh, lots of good stuff, guys. Uh, but see you on the next video, all right? So stay lean, mean, strength machine. Peace. Thank you, guys.